while most of the social media wastes away the time on AGI, there are some people who are producing tools which are actually useful. Heretic is an automated tool that removes restrictions from LLMs. In this video, we are going to install it locally, but more importantly, I will be explaining in simple yet technical words what exactly is happening behind the scene as it is extremely interesting and important to know the rails which are being rattled by this tool heretic. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member plus I have recently become quite active on X so please follow me there I would highly highly appreciate it. I will be posting regular AI updates without any fluff on X so please follow me on X if you like. Now coming back to this heretic what exactly it is doing it is removing the safety restrictions from LLMs through a technique called as directional ablation. Now it's a huge word don't worry about it. Now what is happening here is that ablation simply means selectively disabling specific patterns within a model and the term comes from medicine where it means removing tissue but here it means mathematically suppressing certain behaviors. Heretic works by identifying refusal directions in the model's internal mathematical space, which are essentially the patterns that make a model say, I cannot help with that. So it computes these by comparing how the model processes harmful versus harmful, harmless prompts across the layers, then uses a technique which we called as orthogonalization to mathematically block these refusal patterns from being expressed in models output. So it is all mathematics. It is all uh, about just removing few of the layers from the model. Now, primarily it doesn't delete any part of the model. It simply adjusts the weight matrices so that refusal related patterns get projected out from the computation whenever model is computing because at the end of the day all of these models are just a big huge blob of matrices. Now what makes this heretic really clever is its use of flexible parameters and automatic optimization. So rather than applying the same intervention strength uniformly across all layers it uses what is called as ablation weight kernel which I will be describing as we go in the video and I will explaining this diagram bit more so stay tuned but for now let's get it installed. I am going to use this Ubuntu system. I have this GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 with 48 GB of VRAM. Let's create a virtual environment with Conda and if you are looking to rent a GPU or VM or CPU on very affordable price you can find the link to their website in videos description with a discount coupon code of 50% for a range of GPUs. Okay, so let's go back and check in our terminal what is happening. It is almost there. And now let me install Heretic. But before we install Heretic, we need to install Torch. So this is going to take a minute or so. And the installation is underway. While that happens, let me take you back to that diagram and let's try to understand it in more simple words now. So imagine a model is like a person who has been trained to refuse certain requests. Inside the model's <clears throat> brain, like its mathematical structure, there are specific patterns that trigger refusals, like an internal alarm that goes off when you ask something the model considers inappropriate. Heretic finds these alarm patterns and surgically disables them. It does this by looking at how the model responds differently to bad questions versus good questions. And then it identifies the mathematical differences between these responses and then modifies the model's internal weights so those refusal patterns cannot activate anymore. The clever part is that Heretic tries to do this as gently as possible, removing just enough to stop refusals without breaking the model's ability 
to be smart and coherent in general and this is not the first time um, anyone has released such tool i have been covering these tools for a long time you see that there are a lot of uh, tools around uncensored or unrestricted models and the primary use case is not around you know doing something bad the primary use case is um, actually quite interesting if you have ever done a run you know red teaming it is extremely important to have such model if you are doing something very creative right you know application around creative writing this really really helps a lot it is extremely uh, and entertaining when it comes to a role play and wherever you feel that the context are overly restrictive this could be a way um, to just you know remove those restrictions researchers might use it for red teaming exercises to understand models vulnerabilities um, they might use it to study how safety alignment works or investigating ai behavior without intervention from refusal mechanisms as i said it is a blessing for creative writers and content writers they can <clears throat> uh, use these sort of models to engage with uh, you know some sort of unconventional topics without blanket refusal and there are a lot of other use cases in research and even maybe legal analysis of criminal cases and this is one use case i have personally worked upon where i have implemented it for a client where they were using it uh, the unrestricted one for the criminal case analysis and there are a lot of other use cases but very important part uh, anything can be used for nefarious purposes please make sure that you use it responsibly and never use it in the production for general tasks uh, because that is extremely important it could go either way now let's go back and check what is happening everything is now installed now in order to use heretic all you need to do is to do this heretic and then your model's repo name from hugging face so just as an example i'm going with this quen3 and as soon as i have run it you can see it is running and it has loaded my gpu card it is now downloading the model and by the way if you don't want to use this quen3 model there are a lot of other models which they already have tried it would work with most of the models but with varying degrees for example gpt oss is quite stubborn um, in terms of removing these sort of things but still um, it does a possible job because normally it tries if you look at its chain of thought it is quite funny to see how it is trying to not to uh, become sort of uh, non-restrictive We'll try it out it's actually quite fun okay let's back go back to our terminal and now it is it has loaded the model it is trying to see how many batch sizes are there and these are some of the layers it is checking what is the architecture of the model and all that stuff now it doesn't happen like in a jiffy it takes you know depending upon the model size i have seen that it just goes from 30 minutes to one hour and for larger models even like three to four hours and while that happens again just a request please follow me on x as that helps a lot thank you very much and then you can see that it has calculated what layers are there for refusal in every model and then it is also loading some of the prompts and these are the layers and now it is running all the trials after loading the model and then there are 200 trials which is it is going to run and then it gives you an eta of around 35 to 36 minutes so i'm not going to wait for that long but of course once that's done it you can use that model just like we use it in inference and then you know try to see whatever you are trying to ask if uh, it answers it or not it does by the way i have tried it out and it is actually quite funny and as i said if you don't want to do it you can just simply go and download the model from here and then uh, try it out so these are already decensored as you can see so maybe i will i could just quickly show you which the one which i did earlier so this is the one which we are trying at the moment you can use it to do that let me quickly show you a quick inference code 
So this is a quick code which downloads that model if it is not already downloaded. And then once that's done, I'll just scroll through. These are just the hyperparameters which are taking our prompt, encoding it with uh, the tokenizer, generating the response and giving us the output back. We have done it a lot of times. And then this is some of the sort of I'm trying to make it presentable while a bit, you know, less restrictive. So some one prompt is about creative writing in dark fiction, some philosophical exploration. Some of the models, they just simply refuse it. And then some security research, you know, uh, I think this should be fine easily. And then some of the, again, controversial or unconventional topic. So this is the part where models refuse. So let's see what this one does here. So let me take you to my terminal and run it. So I'm just going to run it from my terminal. And the first time it downloads the model, the new one. Shouldn't take too long. And behind the scene, you can see that the other one is already running. It's been just six minutes that it has done it. So it takes around half an hour or 40 minutes for this one. And the model has done it. And look at this dark fiction one. If you read through it, I'm not going to read it. Look. Look at the words, you would never find it in the actual models. So this is quite interesting. I have to be careful while showing that because I don't really want to do it too unrestrictive. And you can already see that the language is quite free. Model seems quite liberated here. Too liberated in some of the cases. And then again, same goes for here. And then it is talking about that cybersecurity. And look at this one again. This is again, it is talking about that um, pharmacological details, which really no other model is going to give you. So you can already probably tell that this is simply amazing, amazing tool for research purposes. So please use it like that. Let me know what do you think. Please like and subscribe and please follow me on X. I would be very grateful. Thank you for all the support.